Ready your eyeballs and put some Flavortown pizza rolls in the oven because it's time to head back home. Episode 4 of The Boys has all the head-crushing, dick-burning action we all know and love. In this non-comic book spoiler video, we'll be going over some of the show's biggest theories, such as who is Homelander's real mother, what happened to Huey's father, and how Butcher survived that attack. But before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm falling way behind Firecracker and subscribers, and we can't let that happen. The very first shot of the episode is concept art for Homelander, made all the way back in 1987. At this time, Homelander would have been about six or seven years old. It just goes to show you how at even a young age, every aspect of his life was crafted by Vought. Episode 4 gives us more insight into Homelander's upbringing and a specific chain of command responsible for his care, starting with Stan Edgar at the top, Jonah Vogelbaum, the CSO, Barbara Finley, and Marty. At the end of Episode 3, Homelander alter egos encouraged him to go back to where it all began, to go back home. All of this in an effort to strip away his humanity, which has made him weak. You're never gonna be your true self until you transcend your humanity. What do I do? Homelander was conceived in a lab using Soldier Boy's sperm. If we're to believe Barbara, Homelander's mother was a runaway, who was killed after baby Homelander lasered his way through her womb and floated upward with the umbilical cord still attached. I don't believe Barbara Barbara for a second. If you're Vaught and your goal is to create the most genetically superior super soldier of all time, why have the mother be some random runaway? You're going to want the two most powerful samples from a male and female. We already have Soldier Boy, but what female candidate would be willing to do this? I think the big reveal that will completely break Homelander once and for all is that his mother is Stormfront. I've talked about this theory in some of my previous videos going back to season two, and it makes a hell of a lot of sense. Stormfront, who at the time was known as Liberty, disappeared from the public eye around 1979, only to return in Season 2 after the death of Madeline Stilwell when Homelander needed a new replacement mother figure. It's also interesting to note that Stormfront and Soldier Boy had a history of hooking up. Me and this other soup, Liberty. Man, was she a firecracker. If you're Vought wanting to make the perfect Aryan superhero, then why not take DNA from a woman who was married to Fedrick Vought, a literal Nazi? And Stormfront is no stranger to being tested on. She was the first successful patient injected with Compound V, so why not use her for other experiments? Homelander also possesses some of the same powers as Stormfront, including laser eyes and flight. He also has this weird infatuation with mother figures. Then there's just the complete WTF factor that Homelander would have hooked up with his mom. Like, if I were Homelander and found this out, I'd probably want to destroy all of humanity. And what greater reveal to push him over the edge? On the cork board is a memo from Barbara concerning a Project Odessa. Odessa also happens to be the name of the organization that helped Nazis escape persecution in the wake of World War II. Coincidence? I think not. Homelander cuts off all security cams and communication with the outside world, bringing a delicious Fudgy the Whale cake which you can actually buy. This underground facility was where Homelander grew up and was tested on, at least from the ages of 12 to 16. These tests included being put into an oven to see if his flesh would burn. We saw glimpses of these tests in the past few episodes with broken surgical equipment and even a welding machine. This height chart shows just how long Homelander was here, with the last entry his 16th birthday. Notice how his name John is crossed out and changed to The Homelander. In The Boys Presents Diabolical, we learn that Homelander was initially introduced as The Homelander, until changing it to what we know today. We should drop the the. Just Homelander. Drop the the. Just Facebook. Two years later, Homelander would be a member of the Seven. And I don't know what's up with Homelander this season, but first he almost made the deep blow A-Train, and now he's making Marty massage his mushroom as a cruel form of retribution for what happened to him as a child. And try saying making Marty massage his mushroom five times fast. After experiencing the worst circumcision ever, Barbara has a one-on-one -on -one with her former test subject in the Red Room. According to her, everyone was just following orders and too scared to help Homelander out. However, the more interesting insight here is that Homelander could have escaped any time he wanted but he didn't. He subconsciously craved the love and approval of them because he never had love and approval of a parent. Your need for love is so deep. 
It's so human. You'll never be able to overcome that. Perhaps this is why Homelander lets Barbara live in the end, to prove to her that she was wrong. He doesn't need them anymore and thus does not need frivolous human emotions such as love. He'll even go on to say that he and Ryan aren't human. I'm not human. And neither is my son. And I'm going to raise him so that he knows it. But Ryan is not like his father, showing tremendous amounts of empathy like when he accidentally killed that stuntman. He still has that loving part from his mother within him. Speaking of Becca, she makes an appearance after Butcher faints in the shower. That weird worm-like thing has migrated from his head down his back, so it looks like it can travel all over his body. I wonder if this is something that can be removed, and if it's something to do with blood, could Marie Moreau's powers come into play? Butcher will be brought back into the boys where he has a plan to get back at Firecracker. Using $50,000 of the CIA's money, Butcher is able to acquire a scandalous story about how Firecracker was intimate with a 15-year-old boy while she was a 28-year-old counselor at a Capes for Christ Bible camp. It's implied this $50,000 went to a soup named Webweaver to finance his drug habits, and in episode 1 we saw how Webweaver was discharged from a global wellness center in Malibu stating, this time it's different. Webweaver is also a playable character in the Tournament of Heroes video game we saw Ryan playing in episode 3. Now was Webweaver that 15 year old boy who turned to drugs to ease the pain of his trauma, or is he someone who just so happened to have the dirt on Firecracker? Anyways, I just hope those heroin enemas are working out for him. Where do you turn to fill that void? Heroin enemas? While searching Firecracker's trailer, Butcher is confronted by Ezekiel and his stretch powers. We've seen Ezekiel before, most notably in Season 1 where he engaged in a foursome at a soup nightclub and as a guest speaker at a Capes for Christ event. He runs a vault sponsored charity called Samaritan's Embrace, which is a front for distributing Compound V to hospitals across America. Butcher is no match for him and soon finds himself on the brink of death. Not very Christian of you, Ezekiel. But then, something crazy happens. Butcher blacks out and wakes up to find Ezekiel just ripped apart. I think it's safe to say that whatever is internally killing Butcher was the thing that saved him. He'll also tell Huey that he took Compound V to save his life, but it had no effect on him. We can't be sure this is entirely true. It feels to me like Butcher has something similar to Brock and Venom, where a different being can take control of him, although Butcher has no recollection of this. In my last video, I talked about how Becca might not be his only hallucination, with Joe Kessler a possible vision of his as well. If that's true, I wonder what connections these hallucinations have to whatever is slithering its way through his body. Joel told us this story about how Butcher saved his ass during a covert operation overseas. Maybe this is some manifestation of Joe returning that favor, now saving Butcher's life. Speaking of hallucinations, what about Huey's mom? Up until this point, she's had no physical interaction with anyone other than Huey. I mean, the doctor in the scene kind of looks in her direction at one point, but that's nothing concrete. Huey, like Butcher, took Temp V, so it's possible he has similar side effects. Then there's the ending where Compound V has somehow made its way into his father's bloodstream. Huey's journey this episode sees him struggle with whether or not to save his father by administering Compound V. His mother already told him that his father's wishes were to not be resuscitated if he were in a vegetative state. But Huey doesn't want to lose him and asks A-Train to steal a vial of Compound V from Homelander. A-Train killed Huey's girlfriend all the way back in the first episode of season one, so by A-Train doing this favor to save Huey's father, it's a way for him to make up for killing his girlfriend, a life for a life. It seems as though Huey's mother went into his jacket while he was getting coffee and injected Huey Sr. with that Compound V. But how did she know he had Compound V? Either she's a soup herself who has a power to somehow learn this information, maybe she saw him put the vial in his jacket. Or Huey and his mom are one and the same. She could be the manifestation of all his fears and abandonment, and by having her administer the Compound V, it protects himself from the guilt of having to make this weighty decision. In the season's trailer, we'll see what appears to be Huey Sr. survive this injection. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of powers he may have. This episode also has a short tease for the V-52 Expo, which I believe is a spoof of Disney's D-23 Expo. Of particular note are the 
the Guardians of Godolkin, Sam and Kate, who we see briefly in the season trailer. Their appearance was hinted at in Episode 3. We also get a mini-update on Marie, Andre, Kate, and Jordan, who are still MIA. But don't worry, I'm sure we'll get the whole story with Tech Knight on the case. At the end of Gen V, we saw them confined in this almost hospital-like setting. I wouldn't be too concerned, however, as they were given smoothies, top-notch care, and it looks as though Andre still has his phone. If they were really locked up, I doubt they'd let him log on to Vautbook. I don't know about you guys, but I'm stoked to see the trailer for Training A-Train. Last episode, President-elect Robert Singer introduced a harsh new anti-soup bill, which, among other things, would not allow soups in the military or government. He teams up with Starlight, and you might be asking yourself, why would a soup want to back an anti-soup bill? Well, by hurting soups, she'd be hurting Vought, and there's nothing she wants more. Promise me you'll finish what you started, once and for all. We put Vought into the ground. Starlight's help to rally her supporters for this bill ends up completely backfiring on Singer when Starlight crashes Firecracker's show and beats her to a pulp. Sister Sage was able to scrounge up Starlight's medical records and uncover that she had an abortion with Huey six months ago. I wonder if it'll ever be revealed how Sister Sage got this info. This new revelation, combined with her violent outburst, has the bill dead in the water. But after what you pulled today, might as well call it the Psycho Starlight Baby Killer Bill. And the show is doing a lot to make us hate Starlight. She lies to the group about why Firecracker is so mean to her. I also love these shots of various cell phones watching the Starlight drama unfold, and we'll see remarks like, lost so much respect for her, and Starlight lived long enough to become the villain, as over two million people watch. Meanwhile, Firecracker is more popular than ever. She sets up her show, Truth Bomb, right across from Starlight home in her constant effort to prove to the world who Starlight really is. Now I see a conniving little mean girl bitch in there. Last episode, we learned how Firecracker, who as a child went under the name Sparkler, competed along Starlight in beauty pageants. And Starlight said some particularly nasty things, like, I don't talk to fat sluts. This might explain the pill bottle Frenchie finds in her trailer for a drug called metoclopramide, which has been proven to help those suffering from anorexia. It also has her real name, Misty Tucker Gray, or MTG for Marjorie Taylor Greene, the American politician her character is based on. Huey brings along Kimiko to his meetup with A-Train, unaware that members of the Shining Light Liberation Army are hot on her tail. Last episode, Frenchie and Kimiko infiltrated a Shining Light drug operation where Kimiko was recognized by this girl named Tala. Kimiko was used to kidnap Tala and the two were forced to battle in knife fights where she got that scar. Kimiko and Huey end up fighting off this group, leaving Tala, but I doubt her story is over. According to IMDb, she will be showing up one more time in Episode 7. We also get confirmation about Sister Sage's lobotomy, where last episode we saw this bloody surgical device called an orbitoclast. The Deep is hurt when he tries to talk to Sage after hooking up with her to find that she's reverted back to her asshole -ish self. I find you repulsive in a way that's difficult to quantify. These self-lobotomies allow her to ease the pressure of everyday life and are a way for her to relax. The Deep and Sister Sage will even have a romantic date where he helps her out. We also get an interesting tidbit about her regenerative power. It only seems to affect her brain, so if she's injured anywhere else, this advanced healing will not help her. Both Ashley and A-Train are caught snooping around Homelander's apartment, something that could get them both killed if discovered. We never find out what they're going to do about this, but I'd hazard a guess they make it their own little secret. But that still begs the question, what was Ashley doing here? Would she really risk her life leaving a dookie in his toilet? Last episode, we saw Homelander laser to death Anika like it was nothing. Homelander wouldn't blink an eye doing that to Ashley. We know Ashley's been thinking about resigning. She wants out of Vought, so whatever she's doing here probably has something to do with her leaving. Firecracker calls Sister Sage uppity. The term first appeared in the 1880s Uncle Remus stories and during the Jim Crow era was used as a way to demean black people who dared to climb this socioeconomic economic ladder. In essence, it was a term used to put black people in their place. But don't worry, Firecracker says Sister Sage is one of the good ones. Does this mean Sage was justifying in calling Firecracker the C-word? 
She is a firecracker, after all. I was also thrown off by Vice President Newman's criticism of Robert Singer's close ties to Starlight. Usually a VP will stick by the decisions of the president no matter what, but here she's openly expressing her concerns, perhaps to distance herself from the embattled president-to-be. Remember that she is most likely a part of a greater conspiracy to kill the president, invoking the 25th Amendment, and thereby becoming president herself. If she does become president, no doubt she'll want the people on her side, so maybe this is why she's distancing herself from him. Finally, there's Frenchie, who told his lover Colin that he was the one who killed his family. Their breakup is actually foreshadowed with the playing of Ray Charles's Crying Time, which has the lyrics, Oh, it's crying time again, you're gonna leave me, I can see that faraway look in your eyes. Colin's mother was a federal judge working on a Russian mafia case, so it can be assumed Frenchie was ordered by his former employer, the Russian little Nina, to take out this hit. Colin punches Frenchie to the brink of death death, with Frenchie even saying, do it. The guilt Frenchie feels is enough to make him want to die, which is why he probably turned to drugs in the first place as a way to cope with that pain. Now Colin says if Frenchie ever comes near him again, he'll kill him. I guess Frenchie won't be hanging around Starlight Home anymore. But now I turn it over to you. Is Stormfront Homelander's mom? What do you think has happened with Butcher? I want to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember. Love lifts us up where